Fergus, you, you touched on uh, Agile and DevOps earlier. Uh, certainly, you know, I, I've seen in the last five, six years that has become a really pertinent topic. Most organizations, most CIOs and CTOs are adopting it. Um, it increases pace of change, but we've already touched on, uh, on organizational governance and structure. How, as, as business technology leaders, are, are you adopting DevOps, but also baking in governance, you're responsible for people's lives, you're responsible for uh, huge levels of intellectual property and data. The two have to work hand in hand, do they? How are you dealing with this that? Is, this is something that very much was my role at Deloitte. So um, implementing DevOps, but doing it in a secure way and, and, and looking at what you may have heard of as DevSecOps, where you're actually embedding security operations into, into that pipeline. So, um, you know, particularly for compliance, uh, you know, why wait until the end of a build cycle to check and test? You know, the whole methodology of Agile is you're iterating and you're checking all the way through. So, you know, there's a, there's a few layers to this. One is the sort of stakeholders. You know, the stakeholders need to be in, understand the, the difference in the way of working, that it's not a, a gated process anymore, or if it is, it's a, a highly iterative gated process. Um, but you no, know, it's challenging certainly, but essential to make sure that you can continue to release at speed and, and scale is to have that visibility of what, what, you know, what you have coming down the pipeline and inject at sensible places, you know, automated checks where possible, automated testing, and, and, and build the risk and um, compliance folks into the, the chain, as it were, either their tools or, or their processes built into that. That process was absolutely vital. And I, I agree. I think it's vital that, we, that you recognise that this is a huge mindset change for how people operate um, absolutely within IT um, but also in terms of business sponsorship and in, in terms of how the IT operations sort of function works so it's enormously powerful in terms of speed involvement and all of those great things but it's I think fundamentally about self-discipline um, and ensuring that the teams understand that um, with this freedom and this speed comes enormous responsibility. So, um, as you've said, ensuring that um, you build security in absolutely from the start, that uh, you you know it's completely opposite of agile. If, you know you should be testing incrementally as you go through, as you finish each sprint, and so forth. Um, and you know it has to be freedom within responsibility, uh, freedom within a framework. Um, so I think that, that you know the role of the IT organization is to set that framework and to, uh, and, and to be clear and to build in that self-discipline. And if you get it right, it's then fabulously powerful. You mentioned that earlier didn't you, in terms of, you know, write good code yeah. as part of the process, otherwise it will Dog isn't down. just for Christmas, your code isn't just for Christmas, you know, it'll be there, <laughs> you know, next year, 3,000 millennium bug, it'll still be there with you know, haunting you, your name is still written on it. Um, my current companies are too small for the DevOps sort of thing, so we, we tend to leverage a lot of supplier systems. So I pick you know, APIs and good ecosystems, try to buy, buy into somebody, some base system, few of, the, few of them as possible, that kind of can grow with us. And it does unfortunately tend to be the big players that keep acquiring the cool systems that I just owned last year and then being sucked into the, the morass. Um, but yeah, good APIs these days make it easier. And I think a lot of companies, especially the smaller ones, have to pivot quickly. So as long as the CEO has a good vision for the future and can change, and as long as their architecture is sufficiently flexible, then yes, you can. one day you can be a HR system, the next day you can be a student training system if you need be, because the code is pretty much similar. So, so sometimes I, I, so I'm in an organization where we're trying to do these things. And sometimes when I speak to my engineering community and, and across the organization, I wish I could ban words like DevOps and Agile and these things. Because they're, sometimes they're just excuses for not doing certain things that you need to do well, like you were describing. So for me, it's very much about a mindset. And how do we change that mindset? And what is it that we're trying to achieve? So effectively, we're trying to uh, deliver much more predictably. We want to deliver incrementally. We want to deliver in smaller chunks. Uh, we want to deliver products that, that will cost us less to maintain, support, all of those things through the life cycle. And it's about enabling that culture change, that mindset change, because the business also needs to participate in that process. So it's not just about technology. So for me, if I don't have the business engaged in saying, look, we're going to go to market with, um, you know, minimum viable product. I tend to call them minimum lovable products because there's, there's a much better 
Uh, I think personally, I think it's a much better uh, definition of those products. And then we're going to incrementally take features and deploy new features as the market tells us we need them, right? And we can adjust and adapt to those needs. Uh, that's a massive mind shift change mm. because for the previous generations, the business would specify the product to the nth degree. They would then send it over the fence to, to the IT organization. IT will then send it and farm it off to some supplier. Uh, we would always be late, it would always be over budget yeah, and, and all of those things. And that's the relationship and the norm that existed for generations. And so you now need to win the trust, you need to educate and take the organization along with yourself. And for me, that's the first challenge. So stop fixating on solving that problem, fixate on creating those new ways of working and get those communication channels right. And when somebody in Agile tells you, oh, I don't need to do documentation, well, that's not quite right, or I don't need to do, or I can fix forward and do those things, well, no, that's, that's not quite right. And then there's lots of methods, tools, processes that you can adapt to, to do a good job at that from that technology perspective. And it feels like some of those old cultures of the big projects and all that are still being bred out of, of, of businesses. It's, it's, uh, and, uh, you know, I think you need to look at, going back to your original question, how do large organizations take the best of smaller startups? Well, they have to make do with a much smaller workforce. They automate a massive amount. They use cloud. They you know, they, they, they automate and they, they have visibility uh, because they're, they're much smaller. It allows them to be more agile. And I, th I think the, the key thing to talk about APIs is how do you use these things in a smart way that, that you know automates? And unfortunately, some of these things aren't popular with some people because they've built up a way of working that's very manual. And you, you, again, it's, it's sort of breaking down some of those Know, some of the cultural and process challenges and people challenges to say, look, there is a, a far more efficient way of doing this, but it's taking people on that journey. And you know, APIs for me, every organization I've worked in have very much been a, you know, APIs and automation have very much been the journey to take people on. Mm -hmm. but but you're, sorry. sorry, I was going to say is 100% because you have to create the enablement from a technology perspective that's going to allow you to create the speed and agility at the product side of, of things. So in the past, we built full stack products, all integrated, these great monoliths. And of course, you don't want to do that. You want to create agility at the front end in, uh, as to how your customers are, are going to be experiencing you. So enabling that platform mindset Absolutely. of saying here are the enablers or the accelerators, as I tend to call them in, in DWP, I'm saying APIs, absolutely. If you're going to do anything, APIs. If you're going to um, bring identity as a common way of doing things rather than reinventing the whole thing, data as an enabler as well. And, and it's being able, doing that basic housekeeping first, it's critical. Otherwise, you start a whole bunch of random things um, and, and then you end up in a bigger mess than you were in the first place. I mean, I've got both ends of the spectrum on this. So, you know, we've got legacy ERP systems and systems that, uh, you know, run, um, you know, production. And um, those have to be managed in a legacy traditional sort of way. And you need to do that properly and, 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 and test and, uh, and, and do that and be clear about that. Uh, however, where we're developing new stuff using Agile and the delight um, of our business colleagues, you know, when they realize they can pull their customers in, when they can change things on. Um, it, it's great to see it again, and I've seen it in uh, sort of various iterations in different businesses. You know, that the understanding that, you know, you don't have to spend five million and, and, and wait for two years before you get the answer is just fantastic. Mm -hmm.